In this presentation, we will overview the Sound Flower Movement Archive at Academia Sinica of Taiwan. We will discuss the issue in archiving and making available to the public a large collection of artifacts created by thousands of participants in a contemporary event. We shall demonstrate a system designed to encourage people to identify items of their own in the archive. I am Tinoi Zhuang from the Institute of Information Science, Academia Sinica. In the late evening of March 18, 2014, a small group of students stormed into the main chambers of Taiwan's legislatures. The occupation was a protest of the pending signatures of the Coast Trade Service Trade Agreement with China. The occupation would take several weeks and grew into an island-wide movement with strong public support. It was a major event in Taiwan and continued to influence the political landscape and the societal reflection in the countries. The occupation was streamed light. When people retreat from the chambers, they lay behind a vast amount of supporting artifacts and documentary materials. Here are a few pictures on what it looked like in the occupied chamber. The image at the left shows students displaying the number of hours since occupation. The right is a picture showing the event being streamed live using the webcam on a tablet. This is a picture of the chamber after 296 hours of occupations. There were confrontations with the police in the very beginnings, but the occupation remained peaceful afterwards. As you can see from the picture, the Max Media had set up broadcast station in the chamber. Please note that at the left side of the chamber, on the wall, there was a large screen. What was happening outside was broadcast live in the chamber too. Wi-Fi and the internet access was soon set up. Communication was free in the chambers. People all over the world sent in supporting notes and letters. The notes were posted on the wall of the chambers. This picture shows a large panel filled with many sticky notes. If you read Chinese, you will see that the panel is from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. We will later use this panel as an example to showcase the archive. People were able to watch live the occupation on YouTube. Even today, you can search the internet for video recording of the events. But of course, this video can be removed for many reasons. YouTube is not really an archiving platform. Historian in Academia Sinica reach an agreement with the student to systematically collect what were in the chamber before they were prepared to end the protest. All the artifacts had seen been digitized and cataloged. But is that all we can do? What will be the purpose of archiving the artifacts? What about buying digital materials like videos? We ask ourselves these questions. Our goal in setting up the archives has been in preserving the artifact not only for research but also for the future generations. We hope that by setting up this archive, collective memories about this event can be strengthened. What can we do to help achieve this goal? But first, let me show you a few pictures of the collection when they first arrived at Ademia Sinica. Many of the artifacts are artworks and they are in various conditions. They were sorted, numbered, and cataloged before they were digitized. The collection will fill an entire room. About one year after the event, we already had a web catalog of the digital items in the collection. Public.318.io is the domain name of the website. Each digital item has its own page on the web. In the page, there is a thumbnail image as well as metadata. 
about the artifact. The site is text searchable. Take this item as an example. This is a pair of hand painted panels. We take care to provide a brief description about the artifact. We also transcribe writing on the panels into searchable text in the catalog. To strive for general access to the Sunflower MoMA archive probably is our topmost principle. On the one hand, making the archive publicly accessible keeps Academia Sinica accountable to the students about what it is doing. Academia Sinica will keep its promise in preserving all the artifacts it has acquired. And the proof is in the form of a web catalog of all the digital items. On the other hand, as the artifacts are made by individuals, the individual's personal privacy, publicity rights, as well as copyrights can be vulnerable when these copies of the artifacts are made available for all to download and reuse. Because of these considerations, only some thumbnail image of the artifacts are made available on the catalog. The thumbnails are useful for artifact artifications, otherwise they are of no possible use. In addition, sensitive information is inscribed on the artifacts, such as recognized personal names and phone numbers, has to be pixelized to prevent misuse. Let me return to the panel sent in by the Chinese University of Hong Kong. As we can see in its page in the catalog, sticky notes on the panel are individually digitized. The writing in each note is also transcribed. Take this note as an example. From the writing, we understand it is from a student at the social work department. We can search the catalog by the phrase social work department. Surely we will find these items, but we also find other items with social work department in their metadata. One of the items is a video recording. Actually, the video shows students from the social work department of another university, the National University of Taipei. We have listened to the video and made a brief summary as part of its metadata. As a result, this video is text searchable. We acquired this video from its original producers. The producer has put the video in the public domain. We can watch the video online at the archive. A feature is built into the catalog to allow registered users to identify artifacts of their own. Once identified, the user can choose to release the high-resolution image of the artifact to the public under a Creative Commons license, or to put it in the public domain by using the CCG or public domain dedications. Of course, he can also claim and reserve all copyright to the work. In this case, the high-resolution image will not be made public. People have used this feature to find and release artifacts of their own. In the next few slides, we will do a fun demo. Let's do a search to the catalog looking for sun cake. Sun cake is a soft, sweet, and round-shaped cake. It is a popular delicacy from the Taichung area in Taiwan. In the sunflower movement, the term sun cake has been used as a parody of the authority being cruiseless. As we can see in the page, we do find a real sun cake in the collection. Let's not eat it, however, as it's way over its, its expiration date. But suppose we want to claim copyright to this cake. This cake has its own web page. Every item in the catalog has copyright information associated to it. This cake has unknown copyright status. Moreover, there's a quote, identify, then license, unquote, yellow buttons on the page. If this is our kick, I'm sorry, if this is our work, we can just click the button to identify it to be our creative work. After clicking the button, we can now put our name to it. For example, we decide this cake, this work, 
shall be attributed to this person called quote, TRC unquote. It should also be released to the public under the CC BY 3.0 Taiwan license. There are also paperwork to do. We shall then receive an email message. In the message, we will find a declaration and a license agreement in which all the necessary information has been filled. We need to print it out, sign it, and send it back to Academia Sinica. No stamp required when sending back the agreement. After Academia Sinica has received the signed license agreement, he will change the copyright status of the cake. Now he reads, quote, Release to the public under the CC BY 3.0 Taiwan license, unquote. In summary, the Sunflower Moment Archive is designed to encourage public participation so as to deepen people's memories of the event. It has built-in features to allow self-identification of artifacts in the collections. We also feel it necessary to have a terms of use for the archive website. By the terms of use, we are able to state clearly the purpose of the archive as well as various conditions and consideration in using the archives. The terms of use keeps archives users aware of the rights of publicity, the right to privacy, and the other rights of the individual whose artifacts are collected in the archive. The work on the Sunflower Movement Archive has been funded by Academia Sinica Taiwan. It is a collaboration between the Institute of History and the Philology and the Institute of Information Science. Digital Memory Asia did all the digitization works. Work Grimmer built all the information systems. This is other faces of the people working on the project. Some of them are very shy. I shall not try to call their names here. Please visit the Sunflower Movement Archive at public.318.io. This presentation is released under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License.